Okay, so this is a question I always ask people. You may find uh, aggravating. Biopic, a, a Mark Maron biopic. Yeah. Who plays you? What's the arc? <sighs> you can be a self-congratulatory. I just don't. I don't know actors. I don't know the spectrum of actors of young actors. It's Shia LaBeouf. Let's go, Shia. LaBeouf. Well, he'd have to tone it down a little bit, but I think he <laughs> could he? do it a little bit. What's the arc? What would I like? Yeah, what's the what's what was this? Like, I think there's something about whatever was going on at the comedy store in the '80s with Kennison and the drugs and stuff, and you know, because like I recently put on Instagram these two pictures. There's a picture of me at the store with Sam, lit. I'm out of my mind on drugs with my arm around him and he's like, eh, and, and you know, there's a little Polaroid. Did you have an actual relationship with him? No, I wasn't on the inner circle, but I was certainly a drug buddy for a while. Okay. Cause I lived in Crest Hill and that's where I was like, he'd just go up there. He used it as a party house. Right. And I was the guy that he'd give money to, to get things set up. I mean, I was, yeah, 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 yeah. but never the inner circle and you know, but, but there's a picture of me and him. And then I put that next to the picture of me and Obama in my garage. And I'm like, that, that arc is pretty good. Yeah. What is it? What's the story? What's the arc, though? You you have a want, then yeah, you but get it's, a you know, it's need. Touch and met. go, dude. I I don't know that that's it. I I think what happens is, you know, I'm running on this sort of like angry, insecure swagger, and I'm you know, and I'm busting through, and I think I'm getting somewhere, but ultimately, no one can quite get a handle on me. And, and you kind of know you're not breaking through. Like it's not. Well, I'm like, just like I know that like that I'm not myself. Yeah, the tone isn't quite right. Yeah, exactly. But everyone's sort of like, oh, you're the cranky guy. I'm like, I don't, I, this is who I am. It's not a character. Like, I have no control over it. That was the weird and thing. And you don't even believe you're the cranky guy. No, of course not. I'm, I'm like, the, I'm, I'm just me, man. I'm telling yeah. the truth here. Yeah. So the arc is like, how much, you know, just what it takes to humble that fucker. And what is it? It was just a process of sort of failure of not, you know, of not, of, of having, you know, people knowing who I am, fighting to get known, but never building an audience. And then ultimately, you know, ending up, you know, having to sober up, ending up having to give up on life a first time, that, but then meeting a beautiful woman, then having to get sober and then ruining that relationship. And then sort of like the comedy key opportunities kept coming, but no, nothing happens. I'm, I'm, I'm scrambling to make a living. I do Air America. I do a fucking radio show. You think that was like my dream? I mean, it ultimately ended up, you know, teaching me how to, talk on these mics but you, that was a that was a default dude i had nothing going on and they had a lot of money that they were throwing away to get people to do this I, I, it wasn't like this is my passion it was like i don't think i have a choice you know i just got married i'm living in la i got nothing on the table these deals didn't go anywhere so anyways the humbling of that second divorce what's especially humbling about that she just left and you know and she she should have you know, I was a dry drunk, you know, emotionally abusive fuck. And, you know, I didn't know how to be in a relationship. I was totally afraid she was going to leave me. She was stunning. And, you know, and I believe I loved her, but I was just horrible. I was possessive and crazy and I was trying to be good, but like, and she got out and I'd never had that happen for me, to me. You know, I just, ugh, that was just devastating because she, she got Alan on up. I think she got, you know, in, uh, involved with somebody more emotionally supportive and proper and she left and it was for good. And it was like, it was devastating. It was just mind numbing and heartbreaking. And it, fi it was the finally thing like, oh, it's me. Well, I don't know if I, I, I quite realized I was still fighting to get it back. And, but that sent me spiraling. I mean, then she, you know, kind of really hired a, a lawyer to destroy me. And I didn't understand how she deserved the house. You know, I bought the house. We weren't, you know what I mean? It, and I ended up, you know, you lose. You always lose. You learn a lot of lessons. And um, and I get it all now. But no, at the time, I didn't know. I didn't know it was me. I was trying to be better. But then I almost went broke. And uh, and she just, um, yeah. And that's out of that came the podcast. And then. Uh, the podcast is like a, it's like a rock bottom. Totally. It's like a rock bottom that ended up being like there's the nowhere else to go it was i yeah. was looking down the barrel of you know a life as a as a hustling b-room headliner or a real a real barrel <laughs> you know, <laughs> a gun you know and i just started you know talking on that you know then you know it all came you know 
I'd gone back to Air America to do a streaming video show at, you know, with the agreement that they would give me enough money up front to stop the hemorrhaging of the divorce. And, you know, I got more skills and it just, it timed out right. So then there was that and that starts. And then like, you know, then, you know, then there's the next humbling of, you know, Lynn dying. So like, you, you know, which was. What yeah. was the humbling of that? Meaning uh, like there's, it's not a career one. What's the, what well, was Well, it's just the... like, you know, like, I don't know. Like, I don't look at it as punishment, but you know, Mishnah leaving me was like, like I, because I think I might've been a little borderline personality, you know? You know, uh, it, like there was, it was very black and white thinking. It was, it, I was very sort of like, oh, why me? How can this, you know, like, what do I, how do I, you know? And it was just, it, it just destroyed me for a long time. And so then when Lynn died, it was a whole different thing. Like that's a different kind of leaving. And it's like, you know, I'm older and I know we're fragile and I know I've seen people die, but you don't expect that. I really didn't expect my wife to, you know, when I came home, you know, sit me down and go like, I want a trial separation. I never saw her again, really. And I, I certainly didn't expect Lynn to get sick and die. So it's just the depth of heartbreak of those two different types. I mean, fuck dude. So I don't know what the third act is. But what I'm, who were you before Lynn died and who were you after? Like in terms of what, what was well, your I thought, well, well, I thought like, you know, it worked out. You know, the career worked out. I met this woman. You know, well, she, that's what's funny her. from the outside in. I was like, fuck, he had it. Yeah, right. Like, this is good. I'm going to be good for the rest of it. Yeah. And we we have respect for each other. Yeah. The work and, you know, we can work together even and, you know, conversationally and all this stuff. You know, she was, you know, a grown ass woman. Yeah. I had hope for the future and was excited about the possibilities and proud to be with her. And then, you know, you know, and yeah, you know, so you grieve like whatever the possibility. So who am I after? I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I'm not great. I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty, I, I don't feel like I'm actively cynical, but I've certainly might still be numb somehow. Yeah. Cause you don't seem pessimistic. You don't seem, I didn't ask why, you know, I, you know, I didn't see it as personal. I didn't, you know, there was no why me. I was very clear on that. Like I didn't want to be seen as a victim. Yeah, I and which might be bad in, in getting back. No, to I don't love. think it's bad. I that's I don't think that's bad. It's like she it, was the victim, and you know, and you know, and I and and I felt you know terrible uh, about uh, about that, and it, you know, and I was leveled, but it has something to do with the love for and you know what was it that pe that. Like I'm comfortable with people loving, not they, like caring I, about you, but not caring for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she cared for you and cared. Oh, about, yeah, yeah. Cared. But I'm just saying, in after in the aftermath, you know, I I kind of, you know, I definitely couldn't keep it together, and I was happy to be supported. But I just wanted to be clear that like there was no reason it happened, cosmically. You know, I was not angry at God, because I have enough practical sense of death after losing you know several of our peers, and you know, and knowing that, you know, it's all sort of a gift somehow or luck, but I certainly didn't see it coming. And that was what made it just terrible. It was, a, it was just a similar feeling of the type of loneliness and the type of pain of being that out of control. You know, like she died. I mean, and it was during the COVID, it was all, it was just terrible. But I don't know who I am now, but I'm, I'd like to say that I have a, a deeper appreciation of, of life uh, in a lot of ways and an acceptance of death in a lot of ways. Yeah, I, it's a weird compliment, but you, you, you handled it well. You grieved well. It, you didn't seem to make any like unforced errors about the interpretation of it or, the, or yeah. the, what it meant. Because it doesn't always mean anything. No, I, like I really had to like manage my brain about that. I had a lot of things to do. I didn't know her family, you know, and I had all her stuff and I had the keys to the new place she had just rented and nobody was traveling. There was a lot of responsibilities that had to be dealt with to be in touch with people and to get things places and to, you know, her car sat in front of my house for weeks, you know, and, uh, you know, her clothes and like, it was, 
There's a lot of practical stuff that had to be dealt with. My brother came out and then I, and then I tried to get out of town and, you know, tried to have some sort of, I tried to keep myself in her eyes, you know, in her gaze, you know, because I think I was probably like, I was at my best, you know, in terms of, you know, the way she saw me, you know, and what she saw in me was really the best of me. So I tried to keep hold of that, but I think it might be slipping. But that's all right. I don't know. I don't know if that's true, man. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what it's like inside you, but yeah, it's not. It's there's also something to be said for my sister's husband died, and she said, "I didn't know if I would be able to care for somebody, and I could." And that's what I thought when you were saying about like doing all this stuff. Oh yeah, well that's where the codependency comes in handy. <laughs> No, I mean, like, you know, you want to help. And it was genuine. And I I think I can care for people probably more now. You know, because I think the one thing you left with is like, did I do the, you know, the short time that we were able to be together, you know, was I really the best that I could have been? You know, so like that, if anything, it's not a regret thing. But, you know, she just got sick and I thought it was the flu. And, you know, that week, you know, I was sort of like, oh, my God, when is she going to get better? You know, like, what is it? And then, like, she gets sick and died. Like, you kind of feel shitty. Like, all right, I'll bring you some cereal, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, right. But that's how we are with people who yeah. get sick, you know. So, like, there's that little stuff. So, like, I don't know. You know it, it made life very clear. And it also, you know, made me more attentive, I think, of of, of my myself and, and, and others and but it's like devastating. Yeah. We'll see what happens. It's just like, it's some here, here's some more. Here's a little something for your empathy engine. Right? That's right. Like my producer said something along the lines of like, well, that's it. You've got your stripes somehow. Yeah. Like nothing is going to be this bad. Yeah. Again. I have a theory that like by the time life is over, you will have been every person. <laughs> Yeah. Like, oh, now I'm the fucking widow, widower? Oh, God. Now I'm the cheater? Now I'm the... Sure, sure. That's like, you know, the the spectrum of the, of the flaws. How does this wrap up? I mean, that's the great question, isn't it? <laughs> Everybody wants to have it. Wants to have it. Everybody wants to have it.